we're looking backward, uh, beginning from Revelation and going back to Genesis, and we're in the book of Malachi, uh, some 400 years before Christ. 47 of 55 of his verses, he deals with direct message from God to the people of Judah. He's looked at the past and he's reminded them of God's everlasting love. He's looked at the present condition of the days of Malachi and the fact that the people have been backsliding, both the priest and the people. And he tells about the future, something that we can see as a past, but he tells us about a covenant, a new covenant that's coming through a person that will become a judge, a judge of the righteous and the unrighteous. And today, as we look at chapter 3, verses 6 through 12, uh, he challenges us and he causes us to take a hard look at what we are doing with the material blessings that we have. So today, as we look at the scriptures, we're going to be looking at chapter 3, verses 6 through 12. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. From the days of your fathers you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, How shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, How have we robbed you? And in tithes and offerings. And you are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. Then I will rebuke the devourer for you, so that you will not be destroyed in the fruits of the ground, nor the vines and the castor, the grapes, says the Lord of hosts. All of the nations will call you blessed, for you shall be delightful in the land, says the Lord. So then, robbing God, test for all of us, and the practical application today. Robbing God, how are we robbing God? Well, he's blessed us. This is one of the most prosperous countries in the world, and he's blessed all of us. And he says he's unchanging. <laughs> he didn't devour us. Uh, he may be letting us go right through right now through some tough times, but he didn't devour us. So he's an unchanging God. He's patient. Uh, but at the same time, he wants us to see the sin of what we're doing with the financial resources that we have. Now, the answer is not in socialism. It's not in taking from the rich and giving to the poor. But it is giving according to our ability. Now, I think it's very, very important that you look at this about the toll tithe into the storehouse. He doesn't say so that we can have fancy buildings, and he doesn't say so that we can have incredible sound systems and lighting effects, or video recorders like this one that's going right now. He says, bring it into the storehouse so that there may be food. Those are necessities, not nice-to-haves. And, and he tests us by saying, go ahead and be faithful in your giving so that I can open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings to an overflowing. Now, that's not to give to get. Because you see, what he's going to open heaven's uh, windows for is not necessarily that we all become financially rich, but that we might have blessings. The windows of heaven will pour out blessings to us, not necessarily money. And we can't do it because we want to get. We got to do it because we want to give, to return a portion of that which he's blessed us with. Uh, it's, it's the whole principle again, once again, based on what we have. And that smacks a little bit at the edges of socialism and the fact that the more you have, the more God would expect you to share. As a matter of fact, I went back again and I looked at the poverty level of America. And it tells us that for a single person, the poverty level is a little over $12,000. And for two people, it's a little over $16,000. For three, 20000 actually almost 21000 And for a family of four, 
the poverty level is 25,000. Now, I'd venture to say that anybody that's watching this is likely well, well above the 25,000 for a family of four. Total income, husband and wives. And that means that we should have lots to share with others. Now, not for the sake of them not working. Uh, I want to deal with this more completely tomorrow in, in the devotion uh, because uh, just giving to people isn't necessarily the best thing that we could do to for them. Providing food when they're hungry, provided they're trying to do something to advance themselves, and provided that they're trying to work, uh, is a good thing. Nobody should go hungry, especially children. Uh, but at the same time, we don't want people to become dependent upon others working for them. And so we need to take a look at the application. The application of trying to help our fellow man. Uh, most countries uh, have government and religion separated. Here we do also. But many of the Islamic nations and other nations, government and religion are the same. And therefore, when you bring into the storehouse there, uh, it is then both religion and government that are responsible for the distribution of the wealth. Here in our country, we separate religion from government and it becomes believers' responsibility uh, to take and return a portion. Again, we've got to be careful that we don't just say this is for the church, our church. <laughs> it's amazing how narrow we can look sometimes and think only about our church and not the total denomination. And it's an amazing to me that as we look at total denominations, uh, that we, we look at the hierarchy and the expenses of running a denomination rather than world needs. I'm proud to be a Baptist because I believe we do a fairly decent job in returning a large portion of what we invest uh, to world missions, uh, both material blessings that can be given out throughout the world as well as religious blessings. We need to be sure that we always remember there's a balance between social needs and spiritual needs. Social needs are temporal and spiritual needs are eternal if you believe in heaven and hell and in eternal life. And so we need to be sure that we're not robbing God. Uh, but we need to be sure also that when we talk about a tithe into the storehouse, we're not just looking at building bigger buildings and fancier equipment, paying high salaries. But we need to look at what are we doing to impact the world around us not just the United States, but around the whole world. Think about it. And tomorrow I'm going to challenge you, as God has already challenged you, that if you'll be faithful with what God's given to you, he'll open the windows of heaven for you. Not give to get, but watch his blessings when we are good stewards of what we have. My thought for the day, God bless you and have a great day.